What's a quick way for writers to study the elements of story? No, it's not reading and discussing novels. It's studying films. Yes, I said films. Movies, especially films that began as novels. Why films? What are the elements of story that we study? How do we know which films to study? These questions, as well as three recommended films, are the focus. Welcome to The Right Focus, a podcast for writers, from newbies to veterans and everyone in between. Our focus is productivity, process, craft, and tools. We're hosted by M.A. Lee, with the assistance of Remy Black and Edie Rooms, all from Writers, Inc. Books. Each episode lasts as long as it takes to fix a quick dinner, drive a short commute, or take a brisk walk. Listen for links to show notes and resources at the end of our broadcast. Now, on to the episode. We begin with our November Writing Challenge check-in. This is day 17 of the Writing Challenge. How's it going? I've missed three days at this point, distraction on one day, too many outside obligations on another day, not feeling well on a third, but I'm still close to my goal. If you're writing 1,667 words per day, the daily minimum, or if you're writing three days in the work week and in marathon sessions on the weekend, you should be at 28,339 words. Are you there? Congratulations! What's your plan for Thanksgiving? Do you have a plan, or do you hope to make up the lost time with a marathon session? 13 days and 21,661 words to go. If you plan the way I do, knowing I will lose days at Thanksgiving, then you are writing 1,800 words per day. That's 30,600 words total at this point with 19,400 words to go. About 10 days of writing, so three days off, won't kill the goal. And if we blow our goal, Did you get so far behind that you'll never make it up? That happens to the best of us. It happened to me one year, and I'm totally not the best. Climb back on the horse and keep riding toward the goal. Remember, our long-term goal is not a certificate of completion. Our goal is good words in a manuscript. That is a book you want to read. Even when you only have a few words, you're a winner. You have words that you didn't have on October 31st. You may be a turtle winner coming at a slow pace, but that is better than giving up. Before I leave this section of our episode, I want to say that for a brief time, as a gratitude to our listeners, The Right Focus will run a giveaway. We will give to the first five listeners who respond between now and December 5th a free planner. It's the Think Pro Planner, which focuses on daily word counts and projects. To submit your entry, we need your name and a mailing address. We won't collect your email address. The planner is our gift to you. Now, back to today's focus. As writers, we should study and practice to improve our craft. We can find people to break down our manuscript. They can judge how well and how clearly we communicate our story. They can judge us at the word and sentence level. Our scenes and sequels can be measured out to hit an arbitrary percentage for the beats and other plot structures. They can talk to us about character secrets and worry lines, tropes, and required plot events. At some point, though, we need to jerk our heads out of our manuscript and climb out of the mucky mire of words and other people's advice. Advice isn't helpful for our writing growth, when we don't see how to apply it. By studying other writers' works, we can understand all of that. I recommend films, novels made into movies for a quick study of those we've decided to focus on and practice. A word here, study and practice are not drilling to memorize and repeat. Study and practice are awareness. By becoming aware of an element of the craft of writing, we begin to see it in multiple places. The quickest way to spot craft elements is to use films. With films, we can watch more than once and more quickly than we can read. We can pause and rewind and watch with the book as a ready reference. Here's another word. When watching a film with its original book in hand, we will quickly discover how much more is in the book than in the film. Only a three or five part miniseries of one and a half hour episodes 
can hope to capture the majority of a book. We also learn that the screenwriter often omitted and shifted around scenes, collapsed characters into one, and reduced the settings along with other crimes against the book. Don't panic. A film is a different animal to a book. We're not comparing apples to apples or even apples to oranges. It's more like comparing apples to hamburgers. Our first question is, why films? Why do we study films for writing craft rather than novels or stories? As noted earlier, films are for quick study. We can pick three films to analyze for a specific craft technique and see how the technique is built, how it occurs constantly, and how it resolves with consequences. Our second question asked about the elements of story. That is actually a massive question. The writing craft covers broad swaths. Plot is more than the sequence of events. When we study plot, we might pick openings, crisis moments, suspense, twist, betrayals, failures and successes, foreshadowing, flashbacks, and openings. And that's a brief list. Character is more than appearance. It's more than introducing a character in her setting, secrets, angst, worry lines, fears, goals, motivations, background and baggage, conflict, internal and external. Suppose we have a shy character who hates to be stared at, talked about, tugged about, and grabbed at. We can study Darcy in Pride and Prejudice. How do we learn he's shy? What physical actions help us understand his hatred of being gawked at and discussed? How does he have walls? How does he break those walls to show his interest in Elizabeth Bennet? How does his shyness lead to his foiled proposal and their careful rapprochement? In watching for a specific craft technique, we essentially only study the applicable scenes of the film. We're not watching the film. We're studying to improve. Writing craft contains dozens of elements to study. We just need to pick one and go after that specific element. Our third question, how do we know which films to study? We're not limited to our genre. We can learn quite a bit when we study and practice outside our genres. The essential limitation is taste. If a film is not something we would ordinarily seek out for our entertainment, then we will not easily learn from it. Taste, personal preferences, throw up a barrier nearly impossible to cross. I'm quite eclectic in my reading and viewing entertainments, not in my writing, though. Some barriers I will not cross. No gory slasher horror, although I did watch The Walking Dead for a couple of seasons. I came to it late and only to figure out the fascination. I tried not to focus on the zombie bits. Character dynamics and development hooked me. By watching outside our genres, we often more quickly learn to spot techniques and see the many spiderweb tendrils of the technique's application throughout a single work. Therefore, we pick films from books that are popular, either the book form or the film form. We want our own writing to succeed with the public, so we need to study and learn from successful novels and films. Successful films, those created to be successful, have had excellent screenwriters for the adaptation, as well as directors, cinematographers, and support personnel such as costuming and stunts and settings. All of those enrich our viewing experience. The best films also recreate what was originally written by the author, and that's important. Fair warning. In examining films in this manner, you may permanently destroy your viewing entertainment. So, which films do I recommend that you watch? And what writing craft elements can you study in these films? I will always watch for plot dynamics, character revelations, motifs, and more. Persuasion is one film that I recommend. Pick the version with Amanda Root and Kieran Hines. The visuals are better at presenting interior character stresses and desires. Persuasion by Jane Austen is a film of second chances. Watch how the plot is a dance. Two steps backward, two steps forward, two steps to the side. Since our protagonist is a woman and women don't lead in historical dances, the woman first steps back in a dance before she can move forward. Watch how Anne Elliot has to step back, take a back seat, and back off her desires before she can move forward. 
The film is wonderful at giving us characters we love to hate. The people we hate are all different personalities. The two sisters, the father, the male cousin, and her mentor, Lady Russell. Watch how characters who are helpful to Anne are not actually physically attractive, such as Miss Smith, who reveals all about the male cousin. Finally, watch for all the occasions in the film where travel of any sort is presented, from the toy boat in the fountain to letters folded to form a boat. Anne has always wanted to travel. How is this desire all around her? How does she relish any instance of travel's mention? And how does she achieve her goal? Travel becomes a motif in this film. It's not heavy-handed and obvious. That's what we want our own writing to avoid. Motifs are hard to do well, but they are easy to practice in our own writing. Like touches, remember? A second film is Last of the Mohicans. Pick the version with Daniel Day-Lewis. This film has few flaws, and I have many things that I love about it. A comment by Cora in her argument with her father about hacking a life out of the wilderness beside her husband is one of the comments that I love. Another is the two parts in the scene where Nathaniel is in conflict with the leaders of the fort. First, Nathaniel talks better sense than the British leaders and steps into the light. Great cinematography echoing the argument of the characters. The second part is about sedition. And one of the reasons sedition is not a law of the United States. Free speech and all. Yay. For plot, watch the development of the conflict represented by Magua. His goal, his motivation, his actions, one after another after another, were treated to each element at different segments of the story, not all at once. He's thwarted, but still comes on. He wins, but he doesn't. He seeks another way, and he leans into his final defeat. Now realize that he is a parallel to Nathaniel. Both were foster sons of Chinkachuk, played by Russell Means. Uncas was their foster brother. Now watch all of the Magua scenes again, especially the extended climax. For character, focus on the character of Duncan, who we are intended not to like. In how many ways is he presented as a selfish arrogant aho. How is he redeemed? What is important about his redemption? How can we practice redemption in our own writing? Build a character everyone detests and redeem him. One motif is based on the theme that the wilderness is a dangerous beauty. Look for repeated examples of this. For example, when Cora first rides into the wilderness with a red coat troop, she sees a mountain lion hiding under a mountain laurel. Some motifs are visual, some are spoken. This, by the way, is how to use a motif to develop a theme. Remember, books will have more than one theme. Our third and final recommended film is The Thirteenth Warrior, based on Michael Crichton's Eaters of the Dead. This film is greatly flawed. Don't ever watch it for the fight scenes. You won't learn anything except in one scene with the character Herger. Everything else is swinging blades and fancy weapons held in one hand and interesting sound effects. The film's flaws can be blamed on its two directors and scenes added to correct flaws made by the first director. They had to have a reshoot in order to fix the flaws months after the first filming was finished. However, the film is still enjoyable and not as flawed as some critics said. One critic claimed that the main character learned the language in one night. It is clear he didn't watch closely. We're given three different campfires, one which has rain, to show weeks of travel and how the main character learns through the immersion method. That, by the way, is a lesson to us writers. Logic is an important part of storytelling, even with magic and myths and fairy tales. Be clear in presenting changes. Think progressions. How do people regress? What are the different parts that create a transformation for a character? For plot, we have the arc of the stranger in a strange land. How is he reticent to ally with the Northmen? How does he become acceptable? How does his outland foreign ways of thinking 
lead to the solution. For characters, pick the mentors. We have four. Omar Sharif and the two really old women give us brief examples. The character Herger is a constant mentor. What lessons did he give our main character of Ibn? Mentors can be gift givers, wise counselors, skilled protectors, inventors, and motivators. They can be other types as well, but watch for the character Herger fulfilling all of these roles. One thing is deception is a tool for survival. The antagonists use nighttime and mask and caves to hide what they are and create fear through mystery. Deception is that key element that many more people use and with more ways than just masks, both literal and figurative. They use them to hide their goals and desires and motives. Deception is a key element in the sword fight between Herger and the prince, Hrothgar's son. Even Ivan is fooled, and the importance of deception is spoken at the end of that scene, just in case we missed it, which is another tool for us to remember. If it's not obvious, maybe you need to say it when it's all over. When we pick a film to study for techniques that we can then practice in our own writing, we need to watch the entire film once to know the storyline. Then we need to make a list of things we noticed. Watch a second time for these techniques. That may mean pause and rewind become our friends. Once we narrow our list to three or four, then we slowly go through the film with the book beside us, focusing only on those two or three things. We also practice what we discover. Don't plan. Just decide that it's a technique you want to practice. Next week is our last week in November. Our focus will be writing crimes to avoid. Inspiration this week comes from Cormac McCarthy, who said, I never had any doubts about my abilities. I knew I could write. I just had to figure out how to eat while doing this. Thanks for listening to The Right Focus, a podcast for writers at all levels, hosted by M.A. Lee with the assistance of Remy Black and Edie Rooms, all from Writers, Inc. Books. Our focus is productivity, process, craft, and tools. Show notes and resource links for these and other episodes are at therightfocus.blogspot.com. Our music is licensed through Audio Jungle. It's called Background Music Logo, created by Alexander Polishchuk, known on Audio Jungle as Plastic 3. The music comes in five different iterations. Write to us at winkbooks at aol.com if you have speculations, comments, or questions. When you find value in our content, share with your writing friends or write a review. We're small beans here. We don't have the advertising budget of the big peeps, and you can make a difference. And whatever occurs, right on.